Hi, I'm Alex Filipenko, a professor of astronomy at the University of California, Berkeley. And today I'm going to give you a brief history of pi and the computation of pi. Now, the fact that the circumference of a circle all the way around, divided by the diameter all the way across, gives you a number which is independent of the size of the circle, that fact has been known for a very, very long time, so far back that we don't even know the origin of the concept. And that number we now call pi. Now, there's some indication that the architects of the pyramids of Egypt, going all the way back to 2600 BC, knew about pi because there are certain aspects of the dimensions of the pyramids that suggest values of pi or pi over 2 or things like that. They probably didn't calculate it. They probably measured the approximate value of pi, which is 3. The first theoretical computation of the value of pi is believed to have been done by Archimedes of Syracuse around 250 BC. And for this reason, pi is sometimes known as the Archimedes constant. Archimedes figured out that the value of pi lies between the numbers 3 and 10 71sts and 3 and 1 7th. And if you put those numbers in your calculator, you'll see that in fact this means that pi is approximately 3.14. Now how did Archimedes do this? Well, he drew a circle. Let's say that it has radius 1 for simplicity, this red circle here. And then he drew a regular polygon with n sides inside the circle in such a way that the corners barely touch the circle. Here I use a polygon with six sides, that's known as a hexagon, and the corners barely touch the circle. Then calculate the perimeter of that hexagon. Now draw another polygon with the same number n sides. Here I use n of 6, a hexagon again. Draw it outside the circle in such a way that the sides barely touch the circle. Calculate the perimeter of that hexagon. Well, the true circumference of the circle will be a value that's between the two perimeters, the inside hexagon perimeter and the outside hexagon perimeter. In this case, with the hexagon, the two perimeters don't approximate the circumference very accurately. But as you increase n, the number of sides of the polygon, then the approximation becomes more accurate. So for example, for a 12-sided regular polygon called a dodecagon, you can see that the two perimeters more closely approximate the true circumference of the circle. And in any case, the true circumference is still between those two values of the two perimeters. Now, as the number of sides n approaches infinity, the two perimeters, the inside perimeter and the outside perimeter, approach the value of 2 pi. And this is how Archimedes calculated the value of pi. Now, back then, it was very difficult to do these computations. So Archimedes only went out to a 96-sided polygon. Now, that is actually a tremendous achievement. Having a polygon with 96 sides and doing this, these computations for such a polygon is really quite amazing. And with this 96-sided polygon, he was able to figure out that pi lies between 3 and 10 71sts and 3 and 1 7th. That is, pi is approximately 3.14. Now, 400 years later, Ptolemy, around 150 AD, used essentially the same technique to come up with a better approximation to pi, 3.1416. And then in the ensuing centuries, people calculated pi ever more accurately. Until around 1610, a German mathematician, Ludolf von Keulen, calculated pi to 36 digits, including the leading threes. So this was quite an achievement to get so, so many digits in, in pi. Well, during the European Renaissance, some interesting mathematical formulas related to pi appeared. For example, John Wallace in the 17th century showed that the ratio 2 over pi is actually the product of pairs of odd numbers going out to infinity divided by the product of pairs of even numbers going out to infinity. So 1 times 1 times 3 times 3 and so on divided by 2 times 2 times 4 times 4 and so on. 
What an amazing, surprising, and wonderful thing that an arithmetic construction of this sort has something to do with a concept that came more naturally from geometry and circles and things like that. This is really quite astonishing and beautiful. Also in the 17th century, James Gregory figured out that pi over 4 is actually 1 over 1, minus 1 third, plus 1 fifth, minus 1 seventh, plus 1 ninth, minus 1 eleventh, and so on. That is, you take the reciprocals of the odd numbers and you string them along with alternating signs like this. And eventually, this gives you pi over 4. Now this is, again, surprising and beautiful, wonderful, that such an arithmetic thing of such simplicity gives you a quantity related to pi. It turns out, of course, that this isn't very accurate. You need a lot of terms to get an accurate value of pi over 4. For example, to get pi over 4 to five significant digits, you actually need 10,000 terms in this sequence. So it's not computationally very practical, but it is interesting and beautiful. Well, now mathematicians have much faster ways of calculating ever more digits of pi. And with today's supercomputers, we've now gone out to roughly 1.2 trillion digits of pi. That's, that's a lot of digits, wow. But to improve on that substantially, like to get to 10 trillion digits, is going to be really hard. It's very computationally intensive, okay, because errors creep in and, you know, it's just really hard to do. Well, if you're interested in pi, you can explore much, much more. For example, the Fibonacci ser series turns out to be related by pi. The Fibonacci series is just 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on. You get the next digit by adding the two previous digits. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and so on. It turns out that if you play with the Fibonacci series in the right sort of way, it's related to pi. And other sequences of numbers and series are related to pi as well. There's all sorts of interesting mathematical relationships, including pi. You can go to the website, pizone.com, and learn a lot more about pi. And it has links to interesting sites and interesting little funny sayings and jokes and t-shirts. I encourage you to look at this site, read books, look at other websites, and learn more about pi and have fun along the way.